Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is oscilloscopes and series circuits. Our objective is to learn to employ an oscilloscope and series AC circuits to measure electrical properties of individual series elements. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with oscopes and basic oscope measurement techniques, as illustrated in the oscilloscopes and oscilloscope measurement techniques lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only didn't recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll be making use of the Tektronix TBS 1032B digital oscilloscope. This in no way is meant to be neither an exhaustive review of this tool, nor an endorsement of this particular manufacturer or model. I only wish to present the functions of interest on a representative example so the viewer can gain some practical exposure to these functions and interpret the manner in which results are displayed. As a warm-up exercise to the viewer, let's put our series circuit analysis skills to the test. Consider the following series circuit, consisting of a 5-volt sinusoidal AC source with an excitation frequency of 500 Hz, a 150-ohm resistor, and a 120 millihenry inductor that happens to have an internal resistance of 75 ohms. Note the function generator's lead at node C is ground reference. This will be of critical importance when we discuss deploying the oscope in this circuit. So we have a basis of comparison for the practical portion of this lecture. See so if you can solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The complex impedance of the 150 ohm resistor is 150 ohms at an angle of zero. Let's call this impedance ZR. The complex impedance of the non-ideal inductor takes a little bit more computational effort. The complex impedance of the resistive portion of the non-ideal inductor is 75 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. The complex impedance of the inductive portion of the 120 millihenry inductor at an excitation frequency of 500 Hz is roughly 377 ohms at an angle of 90 degrees. The resistive and inductive portions of the non-ideal inductor are in series with one another. In totality, the non-ideal inductor presents a complex impedance of roughly 384.4 ohms at an angle of 78.7 degrees. Let's call this impedance ZL. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this series circuit suggests that E equals VR plus VL. Given there is a single path for current in this series relationship, it can be stated that source current equals current through the resistor, which equals current through the inductor. If we solve for current through one element, we by extension also solve for current through the remaining element, as well as source current. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is through the use of the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule suggests that VR equals 1.7 volts at an angle of negative 59.2 degrees. We could use another implementation of the AC voltage divider rule applied to the inductive element. However, let's make use of Kirchhoff's voltage law. We know the source voltage and we know the voltage drop across the resistive element. A rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation and solving for the unknown voltage VL suggests that VL equals E minus VR. Substituting our given values yields VL to be the remaining 4.4 volts at an angle of 19.6 degrees. Stop. Take a moment to consider the implications of the preceding calculation. In what I'm intended to be a moment of dramatic foreshadowing, you simply must understand that Kirchhoff's voltage law states that for any closed loop the sum of voltage rises equals the sum of voltage drops. In summary, what goes up must come down. If we know source voltage and the voltage across one element, we by extension know the voltage across the remaining element using very simple algebraic manipulation. If we know source voltage in VR, an algebraic manipulation of the KVL equation suggests that VL equals E minus VR. Just as easily, if we knew source voltage in VL, an algebraic manipulation of the KVL equation suggests that VR equals E minus VL. Think on this for a moment. Dramatic foreshadowing complete, I now return you to your regularly scheduled circuit analysis. Application of Ohm's law to either impedance illustrates that current through each element is 11.4 milliampers at an angle of negative 59.2 degrees. Source current for this purely series circuit is also 11.4 milliampers at an angle of negative 59.2 degrees. As a means of checking our work, one can solve for total impedance using an implementation of Ohm's law. Source voltage over source current yields a total impedance of 439 ohms at an angle of 59.2 degrees. The summation of ZR and ZL also yields a total impedance of 439 ohms at an angle of 59.2 degrees. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct if we move on to the practical portion of this exercise. Now that we've got a theoretical basis of comparison, let's confirm these calculations using the oscilloscope. First, 
let's display source voltage on the screen using channel 1 by placing the channel 1 probe from node A to node C, where node C is the grounded reference terminal. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope display and put your interpretation skills to the test. Is this the desired source voltage to a reasonable degree of accuracy? Recall that source voltage is intended to have an RMS value of 5 volts and an excitation frequency of 500 Hz. Use the displayed waveform to confirm these values. To assist your interpretation, note the following settings. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. It looks like our source waveform is not perfectly balanced and that the negative peaks are subtly larger than the positive peaks, but not by much. It's perhaps easier to first determine the peak to peak value. Given a vertical scaling 2 volts per division, it looks like our source voltage is a peak to peak value of roughly 14.6 ish volts. A peak to peak value of 14.6 volts corresponds to an average peak value of approximately 7.3 volts. A 7.3 volt peak value corresponds to an effective or RMS value of approximately 5.2 volts. It looks like source voltage is a little high, but this is close enough to our desired 5 volt RMS value. It looks like the zero crossings going positive for our source voltage waveform are separated by exactly 8 divisions. At 250 microseconds per division, this represents a period of approximately 2 milliseconds. A period of 2 milliseconds corresponds to a frequency of 500 Hz. If these calculations are beyond your ability, or if you are interested in saving time, note the oscope conveniently tells you the waveform has a frequency of 500 Hz in the lower right hand corner. All is well so far. Now let's discuss the core concepts of this lecture, employing an oscope in a series AC circuit. There are wrong ways, right ways, and inconvenient yet effective old school ways to do this. Let's examine the quintessential wrong way to employ an oscope in a series AC circuit first. One of the most misunderstood pieces of the oscope is not necessarily the oscope itself, but rather the little alligator clip that dangles off the side of each probe. Unless your oscope is specifically designated as having isolated input channels, this alligator clip for both channels is always hooked to ground. I say again, this alligator clip is always grounded, meaning at all times the business or grabber end of each probe can only measure the difference exhibited between it and ground. Which begs the question, what is ground? Technically ground is an infinite source as well as an infinite sink for charged particles. In simpler terms, ground is merely a point of reference. What better point of reference for people on earth than the earth? A ground connection also serves to ensure that the external frames of equipment you might be working on are at the same potential as that which you are quite literally standing on as well as ensures the proper functionality of circuit protection mechanisms. By placing the oscope channel 1 probe from node A to node C, we effectively ground node C. This is not a problem because our function generator has already grounded node C. Channel 1 can be used to measure source voltage node A to node C. What if we wanted to measure voltage across individual elements in this series AC circuit? This is where instrumentation problems arise. This is the wrong way to do this and you cannot do this and expect valid results. A person desiring to measure and display voltage across the resistor on channel 2, unaware that the alligator clip on channel 2 also serves as a ground reference, places the grabber or business end of the channel 2 probe at node A and the alligator clip at node B. Again. This is the wrong way to do this. At the risk of repeating myself, I must remind you that the alligator clip is always grounded, meaning at all times the business or grabber end of the probe can only measure the difference exhibited between it and ground. In this improper configuration, look what's happening to the inductor. Both nodes B and node C are hooked to ground due to incorrect placement of the channel 2 reference clip. This improper configuration has in effect removed the inductor from consideration because both terminals B and C have been placed at the same potential as is the one lead of the function generator. The pooled ground connection effectively shorts out the inductor and removes it from consideration. Any difference established by the function generator is now between nodes A and B, the pooled B and C being at the same potential because of the incorrect placement of the channel 2 reference probe. All voltage is being dropped across the resistor and no voltage is being dropped across the inductor. This is not the series circuit we are supposed to be working on, but rather something else entirely. In addition to sheer wrongness, consider the safety implications of this incorrect action. What if the inductor was some necessary critical impedance element that kept current below some specified value? With 5 volts across the 150 ohm resistor, 
Ohm's law demonstrates current through it would spike to 33 milliampers at an angle of 0 degrees. Again, this is not the series circuit we are supposed to be working on, but rather something else entirely. You cannot measure voltage across the first element in a series AC circuit, in this case the resistor, in this manner, so don't do it. Don't even try to do it. Don't even think about doing it. Not only will it won't work if the remaining elements in the series circuit are critical impedances that keep current below some specified minimum, you might hurt yourself, damage equipment, or instrumentation. Here's the preferred but not only method to measuring voltage across elements in a series AC circuit. This is the right way to do this and I want you to use only this method. All I ask is that you be patient and allow me to lead you down this very narrow path. Start by measuring voltage across element 2, in this case our inductor, by placing channel 2 probe from B to node C. Node C, already grounded by the grounded function generator lead and the alligator clip from channel 1, suffers no ill effects by being additionally grounded by the alligator clip from channel 2. After all, it's the same ground reference. The oscope can now unambiguously simultaneously display source voltage on channel 1 and the voltage across the inductor on channel 2. Here's what we observe. As well as channel 1, channel 2 is employing a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division and a horizontal sensitivity of 250 microseconds per division. Here's yet another chance to practice our oscope interpretation skills. It looks like the blue waveform on channel 2 also isn't perfectly balanced, but not by much. It's perhaps easier to first determine a peak to peak value. Given a vertical scaling of 2 volts per division, it looks like the voltage across the inductor has a peak to peak value of maybe 12.8 ish volts. A 12.8 volt peak to peak value corresponds to an average peak value of approximately 6.4 volts. A 6.4 volt peak value corresponds to an effective or RMS value of approximately 4.5 volts. This is super close to our anticipated value of 4.4 volts RMS. Looks like the waveform on channel 2 leads the waveform on channel 1 by slightly more than 0.4 divisions. At 250 microseconds per division, this represents a lead of approximately 100 microseconds. A jump start of 100 microseconds for a waveform that repeats itself every 2 milliseconds represents a phase shift of approximately 18 degrees. This is super close to our anticipated value of 19.6 degrees. All is well with both the source voltage and voltage across the inductor, leaving us with one very conspicuous thorn remaining in our side. How does one measure voltage across the first element in the series configuration, in this case the resistor? Wasn't that our original problem to begin with? Recall my dramatic foreshadowing of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of voltage rises for any closed loop must equal the sum of voltage drops. In summary, what goes up must come down. For this series AC circuit, E equals VR plus VL. By measuring and displaying source voltage on channel 1, and then measuring and displaying voltage across the inductor on channel 2, if we were capable of subtracting channel 2 from channel 1, i.e. subtracting voltage across the inductor from source voltage, or performing the operation E minus VL, we effectively obtain the voltage across the resistor or VR. Luckily, modern oscilloscopes like the Tektronix TBS 1032B digital oscope offer math functions that can easily and quickly perform this operation. Not only can modern oscopes perform basic math operations, but some can also simultaneously display the results of the desired operation with the two other waveforms. Allow me to demonstrate. On the front panel of the Tektronix 1032B digital oscope is a nauseatingly pink pastel colored button conveniently labeled MATH. Take the index of your dominant hand and firmly press this button. The display opens the following tabs, Operation, Sources, Position, and Vertical Scale. Choose the Operation tab and select Subtraction. Make sure Sources is set to Channel 1 minus Channel 2, i.e. Source Voltage minus Voltage across the inductor. Make sure the math operation is centered, and make sure the math results are displayed at the same scale as channel 1 and channel 2, in this case 2 volts per division. Closing the menus, we are rewarded with not only a clear simultaneous display of channel 1 and channel 2, but also the math operation of channel 1 minus channel 2, i.e. source voltage in yellow, voltage across the inductor in blue, and voltage across the resistor in red. All of this with a single button and simply choosing the appropriate options. This is very convenient and the only method I want you to use when employing an oscope in a series AC circuit, unless the oscope is specifically designated as one having isolated inputs. Let's take a look at the results of the math operation, channel 1 minus channel 2, in this case voltage across the resistor. Here's yet another chance to practice your oscilloscope interpretation skills. Given a vertical scaling of 2 volts per division, 
it looks like the red math waveform has a peak-to-peak -peak value of maybe 4.8 volts. A 4.8 volt peak-to-peak -peak value corresponds to an average peak value of approximately 2.4 volts. A 2.4 volt peak value corresponds to an effective or RMS value of approximately 1.7 volts. This matches our anticipated value of 1.7 volts RMS. It looks like the red math waveform lags the yellow waveform on channel 1 by maybe 1.3 divisions. At 250 microseconds per division, this represents a lag of approximately 325 microseconds. A delay of 325 microseconds for a waveform that repeats itself every 2 milliseconds represents a phase shift of approximately negative 58.5 degrees. This is super close to our anticipated value of negative 59.2 degrees. As an added bonus, one can use the measure utility on the Tektronix 1032B digital oscope to display automated RMS values and phase shift measurements for the desired properties. Automated measurements confirm not only our manual measurements, but also our earlier theoretical calculations. Thanks to the math utility, all is well. Source voltage, voltage across the inductor, and voltage across the resistor can all be simultaneously displayed and measured and placed in the proper context. In summary, voltage across the first element in a series circuit is the source voltage minus the voltage across the second element. Use the math function. You'll be glad you did. It's quick, it's convenient, it's reliable, it's effective, and does not necessitate modifications of the circuit or your equipment. Use this method. Use only this method. This being said, not all oscopes are as slick as the Tektronix TBS1032B digital oscope, and older oscopes may necessitate some well-placed kicks in their vital parts to get them to perform as desired. If, however, you have a modern oscope with a full set of math operations, you'd be foolish to use any other technique other than the math function. I planned on going off on a rant about the inadequacies of older techniques. However, I feel it's actually better to just let these techniques wither up and die and then blow away to be forgotten and never mentioned again. If you want to save yourself time, frustration, and confusion, get yourself a modern oscope and use the math function. Let's perform yet another practical application of this skill to another illustrated example. Consider the following series circuit, consisting of a 4-volt sinusoidal AC source with an excitation frequency of 80 Hz, a 110-ohm resistor, and a 10 microfarad capacitor. So we have a basis of comparison for the practical portion of this exercise. See if you can solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The complex impedance of the 110 ohm resistor is 110 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Let's call this impedance ZR. The complex impedance of the 10 microfarad capacitor at 80 Hz is 198.9 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Let's call this impedance ZC. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this series circuit suggests that E equals VR plus VC. If we knew source voltage and voltage across one of these elements, we could easily determine the voltage across the remaining element with a simple algebraic manipulation. Given there is a single path or current in this series relationship, it can be stated that source current equals current through the resistor, which equals current through the capacitor. If we solve current through any element, we by extension also solve for current through the other element as well as source current. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is through the use of the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule suggests that VR equals 1.9 volts at an angle of 61.1 degrees. We could use another implementation of the AC voltage divider rule applied to the capacitor, however, let's make use of Kirchhoff's voltage law. We know the source voltage and we know the voltage drop across the resistor. A rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation and solving for the unknown voltage VC suggests that VC equals E minus VR. Substituting in our given values yields VC to be the remaining 3.5 volts at an angle of negative 28.9 degrees. Application of Ohm's law to either impedance illustrates that current through each element is 17.6 milliamperes at an angle of 61.6 degrees. As a means of checking our work, one can solve for total impedance using an implementation of Ohm's law. Source voltage over source current yields a total impedance of approximately 227.3 ohms at an angle of negative 61.6 degrees. The summation of ZR and ZC also yields a total impedance of 227.3 ohms at an angle of negative 61.6 degrees. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct, and we can now move on to the practical portion of this exercise. Now that we've got a theoretical basis of comparison, let's confirm these calculations using the oscope. First, let's display source voltage on the screen using channel 1 by placing the channel 1 probe from node X to node Z, where node Z is the grounded reference terminal. 
Let's take a look at the OScope display and put your interpretation skills to the test. Is this the desired source voltage to a reasonable degree of accuracy? Recall that the source voltage is intended to have an RMS value of 4 volts and an excitation frequency of 80 Hz. Use the displayed waveform to confirm these values. To assist your interpretation, note the following settings. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Given a vertical scaling 2 volts per division, it looks like source voltage is a peak to peak value of maybe 11.8 volts. An 11.8 volt peak to peak value corresponds to an average peak value of approximately 5.9 volts. A 5.9 volt peak value corresponds to an effective RMS value of approximately 4.2 volts. It's a little high, but this is close enough to our desired 4 volt RMS value. Looks like the zero crossings going positive for source voltage are separated by exactly 5 divisions. At a horizontal scaling of 2.5 milliseconds per division, this represents a period of approximately 12.5 milliseconds. A 12.5 millisecond period represents a frequency of 80 Hz. If this calculation is beyond your ability, or if you are interested in saving time, note the oscope conveniently tells you the waveform has a frequency of 80 Hz in the lower right hand corner. All is well so far. What do we do now? Ultimately, we want to simultaneously display voltage across the resistor, voltage across the capacitor, and source voltage on one screen using the math function. Here's how you do it. Place probe 2 across the capacitor node Y to node Z. Note channel 2's reference is hooked to the pooled ground connection at node Z. This will not introduce any problems with our circuit because the function generator, channel 1's reference, and now channel 2's reference all agree that node Z is grounded. Unless your oscope is specifically designated as one having isolated inputs, placing channel 2's reference at any point other than node Z simply will not work, so don't do it. We can now simultaneously display voltage across the capacitor Y to Z using channel 2's trace in blue along with source voltage X to Y using channel 1's trace in yellow. As an exercise of the viewer, I invite you to interpret the oscope display to verify if the observed data on channel 2 in blue matches our theoretical calculations to a reasonable degree of accuracy. You'll note channel 2 is employing a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division and a horizontal sensitivity of 2.5 milliseconds per division. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Given a vertical scaling of 2 volts per division, it looks like the channel 2 waveform has a peak to peak value of maybe 10 volts. A 10 volt peak to peak value corresponds to a peak value of 5 volts. A peak value of 5 volts corresponds to an effective or RMS value of approximately 3.5 volts. This matches our anticipated value of 3.5 volts RMS. It looks like the waveform on channel 2 lags the waveform on channel 1 by 0.4 divisions. At 2.5 milliseconds per division, this represents a lag of approximately 1 millisecond. A delay of 1 millisecond for a waveform that repeats itself every 12.5 milliseconds represents a phase shift of approximately negative 28.8 degrees. This is super close to our anticipated value of negative 28.9 degrees. All is well with both source voltage and voltage across the capacitor. Now we need to simultaneously display voltage across the resistor using the quickest, most convenient method we have available notably an application of Kirchhoff's voltage law in a modern oscope with a full set of basic math operations. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of voltage rises for any closed loop must equal the sum of voltage drops. In summary, what goes up must come down. For this series circuit, E equals VR plus VC. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation suggests that E minus VC equals VR, or channel 1 minus channel 2 equals voltage across the resistor. Press the pink math button. The display opens the following tabs. Operation, Sources, Position, and Vertical Scale. Choose the Operation tab and select the Subtraction Operation. Make sure Sources is set to Channel 1 minus Channel 2, i.e. Source Voltage minus Voltage across the capacitor. Make sure the Math Operation is centered, and make sure the Math Result is displayed at the same scale as Channel 1 and Channel 2, in this case 2 volts per division. Closing the menus, we are rewarded with not only a clear simultaneous display of Channel 1 and Channel 2, but also the Math Operation of Channel 1 minus Channel 2 i.e. source voltage in yellow, voltage across the capacitor in blue, and voltage across the resistor in red. All this with a single button and then choosing the appropriate options, all without the very real possibility of driving your instructor crazy if you misuse the oscope reference or dabble in some inefficient old school quackery. In summary, the math operation is convenient, quick, reliable, safe, and the only method I want you to use when employing an oscope in a series AC circuit. Let's take a look at the results of the math operation channel 1 minus channel 2, in this case, voltage across the resistor. 
As an exercise of the viewer, I invite you to interpret the oscilloscope display to verify if the observed math operation read matches our theoretical calculations for voltage across the resistor to a reasonable degree of accuracy. You note the math function is employing a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division and a horizontal sensitivity of 2.5 milliseconds per division. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Given a vertical scaling of 2 volts per division, it looks like the red math waveform has a peak-to-peak -peak value of maybe 5.6 volts. A 5.6 volt peak-to-peak -peak value corresponds to an average peak value of approximately 2.8 volts. A 2.8 volt peak value corresponds to an effective or RMS value of approximately 2 volts. This is super close to the anticipated value of 1.9 volts. Looks like the red math waveform leads the yellow waveform on channel 1 by maybe 0.8 divisions. At 2 milliseconds per division, this represents a lead of approximately 2 milliseconds. A jump start of 2 milliseconds for a waveform that repeats itself every 12.5 milliseconds represents a phase shift of approximately 57.6 degrees. This is pretty close to our anticipated value of 61.1 degrees. As an added bonus, one can also use the measure utility in the Tektronix TBS 1032B digital oscope to display automated RMS values and phase shift measurements for the desired properties. Automated measurements confirm not only our manual measurements, but our earlier theoretical calculations. Thanks to the math utility, all is well. Source voltage and voltage across each element in this series circuit can all be simultaneously displayed and measured and placed in the proper context. Use this method. Use only this method. You'll be glad you did. It's quick, it's convenient, it's reliable, it's effective, and importantly, doesn't necessitate time-consuming modifications of the circuit or your equipment. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at employing an O-scope and series AC circuits. We learn modern oscilloscopes with a full set of math operations allow an application of Kirchhoff's voltage law to display voltage across elements not utilizing the grounded reference node. The results of the math operation can then be simultaneously displayed with other circuit properties and importantly placed in their proper context. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.